everybody, it's Rod with Geek Bombast. Today we're going to be talking about Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev's Daredevil Omnibus, Volume 1. Alright guys, so everybody knows the history of Daredevil uh, being most well known for Frank Miller's run on the character. From 79 to 1983, uh, Frank Miller did a run on Daredevil that most people consider the best. Uh, when you had the introduction of Elektra, you had the introduction of the character Stick, who trained Daredevil. Uh, you had a lot of elements uh, and kind of a change, a gritty take on the character that hadn't been done before. And really, Frank Miller was the Daredevil writer uh, of all time. I actually think that that's no longer the case. I think that Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev teamed up, got to work on this particular book, and, and have a much stronger run on the character than, than even Frank Miller, and by far better than anyone else who's ever really dealt with the character. Uh, I might be a little biased, obviously I'm a Brian Michael Bendis fan, but I think even within his own work, I think that Daredevil is the strongest thing he's ever done. I think it's his best long run on any character, on any book, uh, ever, uh, up to this point. So, I'm a big fan. Uh, Kind of along the same lines, when Bendis was given the character the book of Daredevil to work on, it was not really a huge series. Now, uh, Kevin Smith had done a very short uh, six-issue, I believe, run uh, or arc on the character uh, featuring the, the villain Mysterio. It was really kind of a classic um, take on the character, a little more swashbuckling. Uh, Cusada did the art on that. Um, it was a little dark, a lot of Catholic religious overtones, obviously, that's what Kevin Smith likes to do. Um, and then the reins were kind of given to Bendis, and it really felt like right from the beginning he was doing something completely different than anyone else had done on the character. Really, taking those kernels of ideas and kind of those concepts that Frank Miller had done, the, the gritty, the crime noir elements of the character, and pushed them to the extreme, really dived into it. I would say it's a lot more about character uh, than it is about story. Um, he really gets into the psyche of uh, all of the characters, Foggy Nelson, Matt Murdock, um, and kind of tells you uh, in more appealing and exciting ways what's going on with these characters. So, I don't think enough can be said about Alex Maleev's art. He is probably my favorite current artist that is uh, working today. Uh, it's definitely a grimy, gritty book. You, you probably would be a little thrown if you saw him on something like Superman or Teen Titans. But in this book, in, a, in, a, in something that's so noir feeling, I think he hits it out of the park. It's tailor-made for him, uh, and he just nails it. It's a lot of painted, brush-stroke stuff that I really like. Uh, and feels very gritty, so I'm a big fan. We'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. Um, I think that Bendis, one of the things that made this book so great is he was able to tell long-form, uninterrupted stories. A lot of times with Marvel you get characters or, or books where every four to six months you've got some big crossover that you've got to deal with, and it really interrupts the flow of the story that, that the writer and artist are, are creating for you. And what's great about this book is those things really didn't happen. Bendis had years where he could write the characters and, uh, and not have to jump ship to do some other thing. Um, Daredevil, the, the level of the character, he's such a street-level character, he was able to be kind of kept out of what was going on in the big superhero crossover stuff. And I think it really worked for the benefit of the reader, for the benefit of the character, and obviously for the benefit of the, the writer and the artist who were able to do these long-form stories. So if one of your complaints is you're kind of uh, oversaturated with these big giant crossovers and you haven't read this book, definitely pick it up and check it out because it gives you the ability to kind of do these long-form story arcs um, that you just don't see very often. So we're going to dive into the book. Uh, I want to show you a couple of things. This particular thing is probably the crown jewel in my collection. And also, let me tell you a little story about why I own this book. And you would ask, well, of course you own the book because it's your favorite run. Well, that is true, but I also happen to own all of these. Now, this is the Kevin Smith, uh, Joe Quesada, uh, David Max run. It is the Oversized Hardback Collection, Volume 1. I actually have all of the volumes of these uh, oversized, these slimmer volumes, uh, volumes of the book. So why would I own this and that? Well, the big reason is this. I'm a, a frequenter of the Brian Michael Bendis board, uh, as is Bendis and Maliev. They both work on the board and, and spend time on the board. And uh, I, this is a couple of years back. Uh, Alex Maliev started a thread, and he talked about uh, this book being released, and he wanted people to pick it up. Uh, I think he said there was some shiny new gadget he wanted, and if he had enough pre-orders, he'd be able to justify buying it. Um, well, 
I was intrigued, and I made a joking post in the thread that said, well, you know, if you, uh, if you sketch a picture in it, I'll be sure to order one. And, uh, and he replied immediately and said that that would be fine. So that's what I did. I actually pre-ordered the book, got the book, shipped it to him. Uh, he had it for a little while. He shipped it back to me, and enclosed in that was a sketch. We'll look at that sketch in just a minute. But that's not the only reason this is one of my prime possessions, because just a year or so ago, David Mack actually visited Austin as well. He was uh, visiting Austin Books here, a local comic book store here in Austin. And uh, I went and had him uh, sign it as, or do a sketch in it as well. So now I've got a David Mack and Alex Maleev sketch in this book that are my prize possession. All I need is Bendis, and I'll be complete. So I'm going to show you those. We'll take a look at the book on what's inside, show you some of the special features. Let's take a look at that now. All right, everybody, this is the Daredevil Man Without Fear Omnibus Volume 1, Brian Michael Bendis, Alex Maleev uh, doing this particular book. Now, again, as I said, this is kind of my prized possession, and here is why. On the right-hand side here, you're going to see two rod, and this is Alex Maleev. You can see he did a little more than just kind of a standard sketch. I'll zoom in there a little bit. He did a fantastic job on that. And then on the left here, David Mack for Rod. Uh, you've got a nice, awesome sketch there from him as well. Big fan of both of those artists. Was super, super excited to get this book back in and have it signed. So I'm a big fan of it. You've got a nice kind of faux leather cover here, of course, Daredevil Man Without Fear, and it's on the spine as well, that volume one. It is, as you can see, a very, very large book. A lot of issues here collected. So I definitely think, though it is the full $100 price, it is a really good bargain for what you get. So again, Brian Michael Bendis, art by Alex Maleev. Uh, you're going to get uh, painted issues by David Mack. Uh, covers by Alex Maleev with David Mack on a few of those issues, uh, and just a ton of books here, a ton of story. So you get an introduction by Klaus Janssen. Klaus Janssen, as you may remember, uh, he's best known as, um, well, as the guy who helped Frank Miller uh, with Daredevil back in his original run, so it's kind of a big deal. So you start here with this book. Again, the work here, this first story arc by, is called Wake Up, and it's definitely a David Mack thing. And then you really get into um, the Alex Maleev stuff here. A big book you can hear. I try not to open it too much. I don't want to mess around with it. Another reason I keep those oversized hardbacks. Um, but definitely the artwork here is, and there's a good example of that. It's very dark, very gritty, very cool. Uh, Alex Maleev, I think, is one of the best at doing uh, Bendis' work. As you can see here, this is a good example, very wordy. Lots of talking heads, not as action-y as you're maybe used to with uh, Daredevil or, or Marvel Comics, although there is obviously some action going on. Um, so definitely he handles the spoken word dialogue better and makes it more exciting than maybe other writer or other artists would do. And it's tough with Bendis because he, he definitely puts so much content, so much text in the books. Uh, it's, it's good to have a, a good collaborator like Malief. So Some very cool stuff there. Let's jump ahead a little bit. We want to talk about some of the special features in this book. And we'll take a big jump here. Beautiful cover there featuring Bullseye and Daredevil. So let's talk a little bit about special features, and there's quite a bit here. So some script pages. Yep, some script pages here that kind of tell you what's going on. Uh, this is really, I guess, yeah, just the script pages. It looks a little bit like, obviously, he's writing to the artist in here, which I think is kind of fascinating. And it's definitely an odd formatting for that. I will say it's a little thrown. One of the first books from Marvel to do script pages was this one. So it definitely is a little differently formatted from, from now on. Uh, and they don't really intro what's going on to it. Very strange. Here I really like, this is David Mack, some pencils of the sketches that he does uh, for the covers and some layouts, uh, which I think is great. Uh, you get the introduction from Daredevil Volume 2, the hardcover. Now, Volume 1 is the one, again, that had the Kevin Smith story arc. So this is the introduction, uh, which is from Mark Stephen Johnson, who is the writer-director on Daredevil and the Ghost Rider movies. Uh, and it kind of talks a little bit about uh, what he thinks of that. And then this talks about Brian Michael Bendis uh, revealing, and this is an article from Newsrama, 
about what he was going to do with Daredevil when he first started. So an interesting little interview there. Again, the Alex Maleev sketchbook. So you've got him, and there's a real copy of the script that he's actually doing doodles and writing in, which is uh, pretty interesting. The afterword, oh, here's some more cover sketches, which is pretty neat. The afterword from Daredevil Volume 2 from Brian Michael Bendis, a cover there. Some layouts from issues 48 through 49 by Alex Maleev, and him doing his thing. Uh, thoughts on working with Alex Maleev? Gene Colan, Lee Weeks, Klaus Johnson, John Romita, Gio Quesada, Michael, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Michael Avon, uh, Avon Oming, and uh, David Mack. Now this is from the special issue that's at the end here. It's a big anniversary size issue that actually has all of those artists working in one particular book, which is kind of cool. And then this is kind of one of my favorite thing, deleted scenes from the comic. Pretty interesting stuff there. So a lot of special features. It is a $99 book, so definitely something you'll have to invest some money in, but I think well worth the uh, price of admission. So definitely check it out. Thanks again. This is Rod with Geek Bombast. Have a great day.